Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you the whole build process of our camper van from start to finish. We'll show you how we went from this to this. And for each step we're going to share some important details, considerations, and lessons we learned. Our van is a used 2015 Ford Transit with a high roof and a 148 inch long wheelbase. Our design has a super comfortable and multi-purpose bed that transforms into a couch and dinette. It has loads of storage overhead and under the bed, a functional kitchen with a 12 volt fridge and simple plumbing, some inset space saving shelving, and even a small bathroom with a privacy wall. For electricity, we have a solar generator that's powered with 200 watts of solar panels on a DIY roof rack. And we also have an auxiliary battery that's powered with the vehicle alternator. We used as many natural materials as we could, including recycled cork insulation in the floor, hemp insulation in the walls and ceiling, and we used hemp oil, beeswax, and low VOC paints and varnishes for the finishes. We put a ton of work into this van conversion, but please keep in mind as you're watching this video that we're not professional camper van builders. We were experimenting and trying a lot of new things as we were building, and everything didn't always turn out perfectly. So we'll try to point those out as we're going in the video. This is a longer form video, so we'll put shortcut links in the description if you quickly want to skip to different sections of the video. So now let's start from the beginning. To plan the conversion, we drew a simple floor plan, and we also did several rough sketches for building the furniture. Our planning was actually pretty basic, so we built and figured things out as we went along. So the first thing we did after buying the van is to get our two windows installed. We got two windows that open up and have screens. After that, we spent some time cleaning up the inside of the van, sanding down and painting all the rust spots that were on the inside to start with a clean, rust-free surface. The next step was to check for leaks on the inside of the van because we had heard that transits can have areas where water comes in even in new vans. So that was a very important step. So to check for leaks, it was a multi-day process. We had to wait until it was raining heavily and we also hosed down the van quite a bit to see if there was any water coming in from anywhere inside the van. When it was raining, we'd be in here with a flashlight checking every little inch of the roof and the side and everything. And we were really happy we didn't skip this step because we did find three areas where water was coming in. One of them was the top brake light in the back. The seal around it, uh, it didn't seal properly. So we had to caulk all around the brake light and that fixed that issue. Also, all the pegs that hold the plastic cladding on the outside of the van, those were not sealing properly and water was coming in through those too. So we caulked all the pegs from the inside. The last leak was a bit of a mystery. It plagued us for a really long time. It was coming from somewhere on the roof, but we never quite figured out the source. But water was pooling behind the driver's seat. There was a plug that Ford had put there. So we just removed the plug and then water was able to drain directly onto the ground. So that completely fixed the problem. We just had to make sure that insulation wasn't right up against the corner where the water was draining out. After prepping the van, the first thing we did was install our roof vent. We did buy a custom flange that fit the Ford Transit roof and this made the installation of the roof vent a lot easier. We decided to install a max air fan and we're really happy we did. These fans can stay open even if it's raining, which is great, and it also has 10 different speeds. There's an option for a model with a remote control, which we thought was pretty silly at the time, but it would actually be a nice luxury to be able to turn on the fan from the bed. Next, we started working on the subfloor. We started by creating a pattern of the van floor out of paper until we got it just right. Then, we cut the shape out of three plywood sheets and attached them together with a biscuit joiner and wood glue. Before putting the plywood down, we created a frame on the floor using cedar strips and we glued them down using PL Premium Construction Adhesive. To insulate the floor, we filled the frame with almost an inch of recycled granulated cork. The cedar strip frame helped to hold the insulation and it also gave us something to screw the subfloor into. While we were doing this, Danielle's brother built two boxes to cover the wheel wells of the van. After that, we started framing the inside of the van using one by three inch studs for the walls and custom cut strips of plywood for the ceiling studs because they could bend to the curve of the roof. 
This was a pretty tricky step for us because we had to make sure there were studs in the right places to be able to install our tongue and groove paneling and furniture later on. This is when we realized it would have been nice to have a more detailed drawing of our conversion to work with, but with the van being such an odd shape, it still would have been hard to plan for everything in advance. We secured all the studs with some PL Premium and self-tapping screws. Once this was all done, Danielle also insulated and installed the boxes that cover the wheel wells. Next, we built two frames for the windows and some inset shelving that would go on each side of the bed and one in the bathroom. The inset shelving was quite a bit of extra work and planning up front, but it's really nice and practical to have them now. The next step was to insulate the van. To insulate the walls and ceiling of the van, we decided to use natural hemp insulation. We used a combination of two inch hemp insulation bats and thin hemp felt. To cut the bats, we needed to use a handsaw and we were able to cut the thinner stuff with scissors. We did our best to cover every single metal surface of the van. For some parts of the walls, we used double-sided carpet tape, which was really helpful to temporarily secure the felt insulation until the walls went up. For the ceiling, we used string to temporarily secure the two inch bats in place. Insulating the van took quite a bit of time, but it was nice working with hemp because it smells good and it's nice to work with something that's natural and non-toxic. We also insulated the doors where possible and finished them with some quarter inch plywood. So the insulation was probably the hardest thing to decide on. We did a ton of research and we prioritized using a natural material, even though we didn't know uh, how it would perform in the van. So we decided to use hemp insulation. It comes in bats, kind of like fiberglass insulation. And what we liked about it is that you can use it without a mask, without gloves. It smells really good and it's non-toxic and you're supposed to be able to use it without a vapor barrier, as long as you have a breathable wall structure. So instead of painting or varnishing the walls or the ceiling, we finished it with uh, furniture grade hemp oil and that's supposed to keep the wood breathable. And the idea is that if the insulation does get moist, it should be able to breathe out through the walls and the ceiling and dry out. So we live in the van about half the year and during the summer, the warmer months, it's not a problem. But when it starts to get colder and the heat is on a lot more, that's when condensation can start to happen, especially because it's such a small space and it's a metal box. So out of curiosity to check how the insulation was performing after spending a pretty extended period of time in the van when it was pretty cold outside, uh, we decided to remove some wall panels and this flashing here and we went and checked the insulation. So it did seem to be performing well, except that we did have a couple problem areas. And those few problem areas seem to be where cold metal is exposed to warm air from inside the van, but without good airflow. So for example, the metal around the door here and the, around the back of the door, it, there's no problem there. But up here, we had put insulation between this foam part here and the roof of the van. But there was an air gap between the insulation here leaning up against this, uh, this board and the roof of the van. So condensation was forming on the roof and dripping down onto the insulation and there was no airflow there so it wasn't drying. So we removed the insulation that's there. We're gonna have to find another way to finish that area maybe with Reflectix or spray foam or a combination. And then another area where we seem to have a bit of a problem is around the windows. The window frame does seem to have a bit of condensation on it uh, when it's cold outside and the water might be dripping down. So we're gonna have to finish that area a little bit better, maybe some caulking, maybe add a bit of spray foam around. So overall, the general areas seem to be fine, uh, but there's a few problem areas. If we had to do it again, um, I don't know. I, th I think we would maybe use hemp insulation again. Perhaps we would use a vapor barrier this time between the metal and the hemp, but that would also make me a bit nervous that moisture could get trapped there and it would never dry out. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a perfect solution. This is a really hard thing to insulate. There's all sorts of grooves and cavities in the body of the van and it's really hard to go and fill in all those areas. And you also don't necessarily want to in case you block a drain. We've considered using spray foam 
And that's one of the reasons we didn't use it. So insulating a van is definitely a challenge and there's not really a perfect solution. There's pros and cons, I think, to, to every insulation option. Before finishing the walls and ceiling, we ran the electrical wires for the lights and the fan through some plastic tubes from the ceiling down to the solar generator on the ground. We did this just in case we needed to replace something later down the road because we thought it might be easier to run a new wire in. We're not sure if this would work though because the tubes are quite small. And for power, we're using the Apex solar generator by Energy, and it's easy to plug everything directly into it. Now we were ready to finish the walls and ceiling with some natural pine tongue and groove paneling. First, we oiled all the boards with furniture grade hemp oil, which still allows the wood to be breathable. It definitely took a while to custom cut every single piece to fit around the windows and shelving. To install the boards, we used a little bit of PL Premium on each one and then used a nail gun to secure them. Before being able to do the ceiling, we had to finish some of the more challenging areas of the van. For example, at the back of the van here, we wanted to cover up and insulate all the metal around the back door. This was particularly challenging because we had to create these pretty intricate shapes that fit into each other to close up this area. Danielle's dad helped us a lot with this super challenging task. This front area above the driver's seat was also really hard to finish. It took a while to create this custom piece that would fit in there and hold up the ceiling paneling. As we were finishing the ceiling, we also installed our LED lights onto the boards. Once the lights were in place, we were able to finish the whole ceiling of the van. While we were doing this, Danielle's brother worked on building the front face of our overhead storage cabinets. Danielle actually designed and built the frames for the two kitchen cabinets and she really did a fantastic job. We decided to use almost entirely 2x2 two two wood to frame all the furniture. And the reason for choosing 2x2s two was to save on the final weight of the camper van. The big challenge was building solid furniture with these smaller pieces of wood, but we made it work and the result feels rock solid. So basically what we did is we built a shell. Uh, we finished the walls, the ceiling and the floor, and then we were ready to move on to the furniture building stage. And to really maximize living space and hallway space in the van, what we did is that we built the furniture according to what we were going to use it for and what we were going to put in it. So for example on the driver's side we built a piece of furniture that holds the fridge, our pots and pans and the solar generator. And what we did is that we bought the fridge and we got the solar generator ahead of time and we built the piece of furniture around those pieces, more specifically around the fridge so it's really snug in there. And on the passenger side we built the kitchen cabinet specifically around the gray and fresh water jugs. And what was great about doing this is that we were able to really maximize the hallway space and the, the living space and make it more comfortable. But there is a drawback is that if ever we need to switch the fridge, if ever it doesn't work anymore, maybe it's five years down the road and they no longer make this particular fridge, uh, maybe we won't be able to find something that fits in that box. Same thing goes for the water containers. So that might be a bit of a risk in the long run, but for now we're really happy to have these uh, pieces of furniture that really maximize living space. For the cabinet that would hold the sink, we had to create a subfloor to fit the plumbing, and I'll explain that a bit later. We installed our foot pump and the tubing, and we threw in some extra cork insulation in the cavity because we had some left over. After all the framing was done for the furniture, we added half inch plywood pieces to close them in. And we finished everything with hemp oil. After that, we cut out the opening for the sink and mounted it to the countertop. We also made a custom faucet out of a copper pipe that we cut and soldered together. The kitchen sink cabinet took quite a bit of thought and planning because we wanted to make sure we could fit our two water jugs and the gray water tank without the cabinet being too wide and taking too much space in the van. We also made a door that we could access from the outside of the van to be able to take the fresh water jugs in and out easily. We used a really simple marine foot pump that takes fresh water from the fresh water jugs, brings it up to the faucet, and then it just drains into the five gallon bucket. At the bottom of the bucket, we installed a standard hose bib and we actually drilled a hole through the floor of the van 
and ran a quick connect hose to be able to drain our gray water and that's why we raised the cabinet a bit so that we could have room to connect and disconnect the hose and also to have some toe kick space. We're really happy with our plumbing system because it doesn't require any power, it's completely silent, it was pretty simple to put together and since we're using a foot pump we don't go through fresh water as fast as we would with a 12 volt pump. If you want to know more about our plumbing system we made a full video about it and the link is in the description. One thing we would change is we would add a P-trap to prevent odors from coming up from the gray water tank. Next we started building the bathroom. We basically built a closet to hold the toilet and the door opens to create a privacy wall. With very limited space this was the best way we could think of to fit in the toilet with a bit of privacy. So we installed a very basic dry toilet. We're using a separate urine diversion attachment under the seat with a stainless steel bucket and sawdust for solids and 4 liter jugs for liquids and we even installed a 12 volt fan that exhausts directly from the inside of the toilet to the outside of the van. To do this I just installed a computer fan plugged into the auxiliary battery under the driver's seat with a switch and we cut out a hole on the side of the van and installed a small louver. There's a pipe going from the fan to the outside of the van. If you want more detail about our toilet you can check out our full van tour which is linked below in the description. Probably the most complicated thing about building the toilet was creating some solid walls out of 2x2s and scribing some really custom shapes out of plywood to follow the line of the van wall. Inside the bathroom everything was varnished with low VOC varnish because we wanted to be able to wipe down all the surfaces. The hemp oil is great but the wood is still porous so it's harder to clean. So for something like a toilet we thought it was definitely better to use varnish. Okay, so here we decided to build our own roof rack that would hold the solar panels. The reason for this is that we didn't want to drill holes directly in the roof of the van for the solar panels. And the Ford Transit vans come with pre-threaded holes that can hold a roof rack that Ford makes. And those roof racks are kind of expensive, so I decided to build my own using some 1x1 one one inch aluminum metal tubing that you just find at the hardware store for pretty cheap. So that worked. It's very solid. I'm happy with how it ended up, but it was a ton of work. It was actually really, really hard to do to cut the, these metal pieces and just make them fit perfectly onto the pre-threaded holes that the roof uh, already had. It was just a ton of work and really hard to do. So if I had to do that again, I would probably buy the Ford roof rack and just modify it. We installed two 100 watt solar panels and ran the cables through a hole drilled in the roof of the van. And as you can see here, I had to create a small piece to seal the opening and hold the wires. I had to get a bit creative here with random pieces found at the hardware store and a lot of caulking to make sure it didn't leak. Next, we started building the bed and dinette area. Here, we really took our time to plan and create a multifunctional space that would act as a dinette area a lounging space, and a bed with plenty of accessible storage. We first built a frame out of 2x3s and put some strengthening supports in the middle. We then finished the top with some 1x4 slats that also formed two hinged panels for the front and back of the bed. The one at the back creates a backrest if we want to sit up in bed and the one at the foot of the bed is used to access storage under the bed from inside the van. And the reason why we chose to finish the entire top of the bed frame with wood slats instead of a full piece of plywood is to make sure that there's always some ventilation under the mattress. At the foot of the bed frame we built these two seats with some storage underneath and a small step in the middle to be able to put our feet up and also fit more storage. We then attached all the pieces together and secured them to the floor and the walls. For the adjustable backrest, we came up with an idea to run some rope through a copper pipe attached to the backrest. Running the rope through the copper pipe distributes the weight so that the backrest doesn't break. So we can pull it up and secure it to boat cleats that are on the side of the bed. So far it's been holding up very well, but we're careful with it. We also built a small swivel table that serves two purposes. 
It's a table, but it also slides onto these little rails to complete the foot of the bed. The table has a really simple construction. There's a flange at the bottom that screws into the leg that's made using galvanized pipes and elbows, and it just slides into a slightly bigger pipe that attaches to the foot of the bed. That way the table can rotate in several different positions depending on what we need. The idea behind the bed and dinette design is that we wanted to create something that was comfortable and that could be transformed without too much work. After finishing the bed, we installed the overhead storage. We added a plywood bottom to the face that was already built and attached it to the ceiling and walls. It didn't feel secure enough with only a few anchor points where the face of the storage touches the roof rafters. So we added an L bracket in one spot and attached the ends to other supports. Looking back, we wouldn't use cedar for this because the wood is just too soft. We then put up all the cabinet doors and Danielle came up with an ingenious low-tech way to prop them up. She just cut some metal wire and created a little arm similar to what you see holding the hood of a car. The arm simply rotates through a little block of wood, comes down into the corner to hold the door, and then it folds back up and attaches to a small magnet on the door. You'll also see that we simply cut out holes for handles. We thought this was a nice and easy way to create handles without using any hardware, and it also allows for ventilation in the overhead cabinets. We also cut out holes in various areas throughout the van for the same purpose. We think it's really important to have good airflow throughout a small space like this to prevent moisture and mold issues. One of the last steps was to finish the floor with cork tiles. We cut them all out to fit around the furniture and glued them down using low VOC contact cement. We chose cork because it's natural and it added another small layer of insulation where we stand but we did still have to varnish it after it was installed, so it's not a completely natural option. Once the floor was done, we put in some finishing touches like a small spice rack, a little shelf to hold our cutting boards and oils, and another shelf up top to hold our speaker and devices. We also added two more reading lights at the back of the van, and I finished the side and back doors with some paintings. We installed blackout curtains at the front of the van for privacy and we built a double curtain rod for the side windows. One has blackout curtains and the second one has a lighter fabric that lets light through so this gives us two different options. Danielle's mom did all the sewing for the curtains and the cushion covers which was super helpful. One of the last steps was getting our Webasto heater installed by a professional and this just runs off the gas tank of the van. We also installed a smoke and a carbon monoxide detector. So that is the whole build process from start to finish. If you want to see the final tour of the camper van, uh, you can click the card right there. I'll also put a link in the description below. And I'll also include some links to some of the products we used if you want to check those out. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.